welcome to Real Estate and the Adventures of Parenthood with Cindy Pratchgrave. And today my episode is going to be a little bit different. Like I said, it's an adventure. Life is an adventure. And you know what? We never know what we're going to encounter. So let me tell you a little bit more of background story of what actually happened a few years ago before actually how I ended up in the whole guess what? Egg donation process. That's why I've been a little bit able. I've been a little bit more like, hey, um, let me see if I should say it or not. Talk about it. But I need to talk about this because a lot of women out there don't, don't talk about it. And it's not spoken about it enough. Um, in the past few weeks, in the past few months, I've met a lot of fabulous, wonderful women and, you know, some of them are going through infertility. Some of them are going through issues like endometriosis. Some of them are trying to conceive. Some of them have had multiple miscarriages. And some of them are looking for different alternatives, such as, you know, ways of adopting a baby. Or, you know, can I find a surrogate? Can I find someone that will give me an egg? Or what about sperm? Or is it going to be someone that is going to be close by me or so forth? You know, there's so many things that can actually change. And a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people don't know about the process. A lot of people don't, don't understand what is, how important this is for a woman or a family to have, you know, an actual family meeting, a man and a woman, same sex. It doesn't matter what sex you are. Sometimes you want to be that parent, but how can you achieve that? So let me tell you, your, let me tell you my story and how all this began. Back when I was 16, I had like lots of cramps, um, and I'm going to get into a little bit of details here. So I was having a lot of issues like with um, a lot of pain, and when I was 16, the doctor told me I wouldn't be able to have babies, especially when I grew up. And for me, it was like, you know, what am I going to do? I mean, I, I've always wanted to have family. I've always wanted to have kids, and when I was 20. Three was when, oh, 23, 2024, when I, was in tw- when I was 24 years old, they discovered I had endometriosis, and this is back in 2010. So in 2010, I went through the surgery, laparoscopic surgery, because I had a lot of pain to the point that I would, I would say that I had freaking, uh, freaking fire miles, or freaking fire, yeah, freaking miles, yeah. Freaking fire miles. And I was like, what is wrong with me? They treated, they did, in one year, they did three uh, three endoscopies and colonoscopies. And it was like really painful because they told me I I had a topic pregnancy. It was not a topic pregnancy. Miscarriage, it was never miscarriage. Um, They told me that I had um, ulcers in my stomach, which is true because I did get uh, pep, um, oh my gosh, um, Prolific for my ulcers, but then I, I lost like so much weight. So if you look at a picture of me when it was like 2008, 2009, 2010, I was skinny, like skinny, 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 and I look sick too. But sometimes there's ways that our body tells us that we're sick and we're unhappy. Let me get that into another episode. But in this case, I want to talk about infertility, and it was like really frustrating for me because I didn't have like options or I didn't have like answers and I was really really stressed because I really really wanted to know the answer of what was really going on and so I went to multiple doctors and until like I said I remember because it was so painful to sit down sometimes it was so painful to to stand up and I was like I don't know what I have like my lower back was killing me it was so much pain that I felt like I had needles and nothing would work, nothing. Like, I went through birth control. I went through different nothing. And even changing my diet, too. But I was still in pain. And I did not know that I had endometriosis. So I was in Minot, North Dakota. The doctor told me, hey, you got to go to an um, OBGYN. I'm like, but I'm not pregnant. She's like, yeah, this thing, that I think you got um, endometriosis. And I'm like, okay, let me go to the doctor. Let me see what they say. They told me, okay, we need to, you, we need to schedule a surgery ASAP when I got there. And they found out that I had an endometriosis and they did a laparoscopic surgery through my belly. And it was 
it was kind. Uh, they actually uh, catarized the endometriosis to make it better. And then I got into a one year, um, I think it was six months, six months or a year, Lupern Depot. So it was like to reset my body completely so I can get pregnant. Then in 2011, they told me that my tubes, no, wait, 2012, 2013, they told me I had my tubes were, um, my tubes were clogged and that they will probably have to perform surgery. So during that time, it was like May 2000, May 2013, May or March, I had a histopinogram. A histopinogram is a uh, process that they will insert dye into your tube, fallopian tubes, to see how they are. And effectively, I my tubes were uh, clogged. So that's one of the reasons I couldn't get pregnant. And then later on, I found out on June 2013 that I was pregnant with my first child. So I went through a process of you know, not being able to have kids and then finding an alternatives and finding the what was the whole process. And this is not the story for everybody, but there is hope. It's just finding the right doctor that's going to guide you into the right process and how you can actually be able to conceive that child if you wanted to. And sometimes there's different ways or there's methods that need to be alternated, need to be alternatedly discovered or found or see what would be a better option for that couple or for that person completely just because not everybody um, not everybody understands, not everybody agrees. It all has to do sometimes with religions, with perspectives, with um, values, morals, every little thing. But at the end of the day, when you want to have a kid Either you adopt or you go through fertility process. And this time around, um, so my brother, I, I speak openly about my brother. I love my brother dearly. My brother is married to military and my brother's gay. So my, but my brother is, um, same sex couple and they've always wanted to have kids. And jokingly, like five years ago, they asked me, Hey, can, Will you donate? Will you be willing to donate your ex? I'm like, yeah, of course I'll do it. Okay. Now, before this whole thing happened, I wanted to donate my, my eggs when I was younger, when I was in my 20s and so forth, just because it wasn't because of the money. They paid good, really good money for donation. And I think you can donate up to six times. Um, I think you can donate up to six times. I think it's up to three times a year. But double check on that because I'm not so sure. But in this case, I had looked at it, but I was always scared in the process of if I go ahead and donate my eggs, where are these eggs going to end up? You know, I don't want to have like 10 years or 15 or 20 years later say, hey, you are my mom. And what if that child, like for me, it was like, what if that child would end up in the wrong hands? Or, you know, who would be the parents? Or will I ever find out? I mean, believe me, then after I, I'll explain this in a little bit. But it was, it was a whole process. And for me, it was like, wow, you know, I've always wanted to help someone else having kids because it's a joy. It's, you know, it's a blessing. A baby is a blessing. And my brother talked to me a few, uh, you know, we had talked about it. And I'm like, okay, you know what? And he said, and I, I told him this, look, I do not want to get into a relationship until after I donate the eggs. After do I donate the eggs, then we can move, I can move forward with my life and, you know, maybe get into a relationship or start dating. I've been single for two years. So in this case, um, we had talked about this last year. They said, hey, you know what, we're going to go in February. February's where, uh, January, we're going to start the process. I'm like, okay. Anyways, I wasn't really paying attention just because I've been so busy with my stuff in my life. I mean, I do have two little boys, and I love them to that. But on March, he's like, hey, um, we're starting the process. I'm like, perfect. Okay. So there is a lot that entails into egg donation. You have to have, you have to be healthy. They're going to do a CBC. They're going to do a complete genetics test. They're going to do, um, I think they also do, oh, yeah, they also did a saliva test for the uh, for, for genetics and all that, too. 
And that was one of the tests they did. Then they also, I am 30, I just turned 37. So when I did the egg donation process, I was 36. So for my age in the egg donation world, I am old. But in my case, after all my studies, all my tests and all that, they said, hey, you're, I have, my eggs are above average for my age, which is perfect. So now that after I did the, the test, the, the, the blood test, the genetics test, the DNA test, every single little thing. Now they did an ultrasound and they had to wait for my period to come in because once my period was in, then that was most likely when everything started. They needed to do that a week before, a week before my period started. So I always um, track my period completely in an app and right now I'm doing an Apple app. So I, I always uh, keep track of that. And then the following week when my period started was that's when they actually had to do the ultrasound. So I remember I was in Austin. I was in a conference and they're like, the doctor called like, hey, you need to do your ultrasound today. Oh, and also you have to do a psychological and a psychological test too, making sure I think it's a psychiatric test. Um, meaning you do a psychological test and then you are um, evaluated by a psychologist to make sure that you are okay, that you are willing and able to donate, that you're mentally stable. And that is something that sometimes people will say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it, but then am I really going to do this? Is this going to be something that I really want to do? And in my case, I'm like, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it. Okay, let's go. So, um, it was interesting what the uh, psychologist said about myself just because I am so awful female. And <laughs> he said, I remember he said one of the things was like, hey, you know what? You seem like you're like you're a goddess or something I'm like, uh, no, I'm a very busy person, meaning that I am willing to do anything and everything that it takes. I'm a mom. I'm an author. I've been on a TV show. I'm a realtor. I do cryptocurrency trading. I do stock trading. I have a podcast. And he's like, oh, this is what I understand. This is why, yeah. He's like, don't you have a little bit on your plate? Oh, yeah, and I also train and get up at 4.30 in the morning. Okay, so then that was one of the things. So these psychological tests are really, really interesting, though. Cannot remember what he's exactly his exact words were. But I did learn about something, too. There are books about the magical egg meaning the egg that you're donating, if you have kids and how to explain it. Okay, no, so now moving forward to the process is I went ahead, I was in Austin. I was, like, kind of irritated because I'm like, you got to be kidding. you got to be kidding. Well, if you didn't do it now, then you're going to have to wait till the next month. I'm like, look, I am going to Mexico, and I am not going to wait till the next month. I am going to do this now. So I called my brother. I'm like, you deal with this. You got me into this. You are doing, you're, you're going to find a place, a facility so I can get the ultrasound because it was like, once you start this process, there's no like, oh, I'm going to do this later. It's going to, it has to be that day or that time. So everything is so, um, strictly calculated and it's time, it's a time thing. So I did it the first day because then that weekend they had to actually make sure that I would have, um, I was able to donate eggs and all that and that my ovaries were good too. So I can start the medical process, meaning hormones treatments. Um, there, there were like four type of hormone treatments that I had to take, but most likely it was two injections a day. And then when I was getting to the last uh, few days, it was three, it was four. I think it was like two in the morning, two at night. Cannot remember right now. But when you're going through the former process, it's just like blood test, ultrasound every other day. And in my case, because my brother lives in Louisiana, but we all did this in Dallas, Texas, I had to go ahead and from Louisiana, I had to fly in from Atlanta to Texas. And this is like, if you follow me on social media, Facebook, TikTok, um, TikTok, Instagram, then I did post on Facebook and Facebook and TikTok. So during this process, it's like I remember I was like, well, you know what? I'm doing this. Um, I I was taking the ultrasound 
and blood tests here in Brappleton, which is a reproductive fertility clinic too. And the doctor called me, no, my brother called me Wednesday night and he's like, Hey, um, I know it's five o'clock, but can you jump on a plane and get over here? Cause you have an appointment tomorrow. What? He's like, yeah, the doctor wants to see you. I'm like, what? You're kidding me, right? He's like, no, no, you need to be there tomorrow. Okay. Thank God that I have the flexibility to just go ahead and jump on a plane and say, okay, let's just go ahead and do this. I was less than 12 hours in that, um, in that place. And I was like, you're kidding me, right? And my brother is like, no, we gotta make it. Okay, fine. So I get there like at one o'clock in the morning. I was starving. Anyways, I think I got the appointment. It was like a 7.30 or 9.30. So I can hop on the plane at 1 o'clock so I can come back to Atlanta. All right. Then I had an appointment on that Monday, Wednesday, and then that, no, Monday was like my last day. And then I had to do another appointment on that Thursday, Friday. So I had like six ultrasounds in total during this whole process. And on Friday, I remember it's like, okay, so I have to go ahead and fly back into, uh, so yeah, Thursday. So Thursday night, I, I, I had scheduled my appointment. I was like, okay, so I'm just going to get there. So I'm going to have this, the appointment on Friday. And then I'm going to be able to donate my eggs on Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. Get there to the airport. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was like a lot of cancellations on that Thursday. My flight was supposed to be at 10 o'clock. All right. It was like they delay, delay, delay. I'm like, I'll be there at midnight. Nope. Delayed. So there was like a humongous line. I was like, okay, call my brother. I'm like, look, I need to be there because I am donating like He's like, you need to get your butt here. I'm like, okay, I'm just trying. I'm trying to find a place. I'm trying to find what airline can I fly. Luckily, I got into Southwest Airlines. Fine. I travel with Southwest Airlines. I arrived to Love Field, um, Texas, and they, we had to move the appointment to 930 because I got there like at 8 o'clock or something. So good thing is that it was like around like 8. Eight-ish, or it's like 10 minutes or 15 minutes away from the airport, which is awesome. So going before this whole thing, before I actually went through the, the egg donation process, meaning like the retrieval egg, I, like I said, I had to, I had to calculate my time, like around like between 6 and 9 p.m. every single night, I had to inject myself two to three times a night. And it was with hormones. One with, I cannot remember the medications right now. And they made me like really tired and I was like, okay, I'll do this. And I was sleeping a lot. And, you know, plus I was also, um, I had changed my body, my diet into being a vegetarian because that way I could actually, um, you know, focus more and just, just be me, I guess. So after that, the last four days I had to do, Morning injections and night injections. There is, I don't remember what their, um, this hormone is called, but on that Friday, everything was fine. Everything was good. So now to mature those eggs, I had to do a, to mature the eggs and to prevent the eggs from, from, to prevent myself from ovulating. Oh, because before this, this whole thing is, when you're in your period, okay, they want to take control over your, your, your period, right? They're going to get you into birth control. So you're in birth control for around five days and then you're just going to continue bleeding. Then after that, you're going to go ahead and do the first, the second ultrasound. And then that's when the medication starts. So you're going to do that between 10 and 11 days. Then after that, um, when you start the medication, then you have the two, um, two injections, which I actually did in my tummy. I actually did a video of, of it too. So either on your abdomen, your thighs, or your arms. So there's six places you can actually do it. So then after that, okay, the last day, 17th, 
that's when I actually did the ultrasound. The ultrasound, everything was good. Now this is going to be really, really interesting. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the trigger hormone, which is actually going to mature the egg, and I have to have a pregnancy test. The funny thing about all this is that my brother's like, can you just buy a reusable one? I'm like, no, you can't buy a reusable, you can't have reuse a pregnancy test at all. He's like, oh, okay, that was hilarious though. So you could definitely say that he's never been with a woman. So I was really scared for this one because this needle for the trigger, um, the trigger hormone is that it's like this big. If you're not watching, it's probably like, it's really thin. It has to actually hit in your buttocks muscle. And then 24 hours later on that Sunday, I had to have a positive pregnancy test without being pregnant. So I had I haven't had intercourse and all that in a very, very long time. And I got a positive pregnancy test. So then that Monday, on that Friday, the doctor told me, you're going to be ready for Monday. So that's when, the, when it happened. I got into the process at 8 o'clock, um, 8, 8 in the morning. And I was done before noon. So by 10, 11 o'clock, they actually had retrieved it. It was like a really simple process. I didn't feel a thing or anything. I did feel afterwards like somebody had hit me in the ovaries. When I'm telling you somebody had punched me, that is the way that I felt. But other than that, I didn't feel anything. I didn't bleed, nothing. So like I said, it's a very, very interesting process. And I am very, very grateful to be part of this process with my brother and my brother-in-law. And we actually got the results. So they were able to, um, they were able to retrieve six eggs and they were all fertilized, meaning that we found out the sexes of the babies. So this is like so advanced. You can find out, um, if they're good or not, um, how many, uh, have been fertilized. So the first time they retrieved the six eggs, six of them were fertilized and, uh, four, uh, were, wait, six were fertilized, wait, inseminated, six were, four, uh, four were for, fertilized, and then three were good. So out of all of them, three were the good ones. So now we're going to go into the surrogate process, which is pretty interesting. Um, I know these surrogates personally. My brother knows them. They've been really good friends. So, and the babies are going to be born in North Dakota. Guess what? By my same doctor. So this is, has been a, such an, an amazing journey so far. So I'm going to keep you guys updated. If you guys have any questions or anything, please let me know in regards to infertility, about donation, um, egg donation, about, you know, sor sororacy. There's a lot of things that you have to come into contract. Like, even though my brother is my brother, I love him to death. But legally, we have to have, like, Who's going to call, I mean, am I going to be in love in their life or not? Or, you know, and I'm very close to my, to my family. So, I mean, I see them every other weekend sometimes. And, you know, and, and explaining the whole thing, the process to the kids too, when they become bigger, are we going to tell them that these are magical eggs or are we going to tell them the truth when they're, they, they become big, you know, and it's all a biological thing, but in the, hands of science so guys i hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you guys have, like i said you guys have any questions this is any press phrase and i hope you really enjoyed this uncommon topic today so like i said feel free to share comment and let me know if you guys want to hear more of the uh, of this process have a beautiful day